Welcome to Carter Cutlery, your final destination in your quest for perfect knives. I'm Murray Carter, 17th generation Yoshimoto bladesmith, master bladesmith of the American Bladesmith Society, author, pilot, and I'm fluent in Japanese. I spent 18 years in Japan and have personally forged and completed over 30,000 knives and have hand sharpened more than 125,000 blades since 1989. I've trained thousands of students how to successfully sharpen blades and dozens of apprentices how to forge high performance knives in the Japanese tradition. We are so blessed that you have decided to join us here today. And why don't you follow me now as I take you through the knife shop and I will show you how I forge and complete a high performance Japanese kitchen knife. We start by lighting a fire from kindling. A torch gets things going quickly. Coke is coal that has been heated in order to drive away impurities such as sulfur and phosphorus, which can contaminate steel. The Coke fueled forge allows excellent control over how we heat the steel to make the best blades. Forging knives is like baking. It is all about time and temperature. Pictured here is the last ever Sakamoto Shiki power hammer to ever be manufactured in Japan. It was made at our custom request just for our shop. We want to keep it well oiled so that it will last for generations. This kind of mechanical hammer is ideal for forging thin blades. In order to make a blade that has superior toughness and unmatched cutting performance, we forge exclusive laminated steel consisting of soft stainless steel outer layers with a Hitachi white steel core in the middle. We pre-cut the steel on a bandsaw, smaller pieces for smaller knives and large pieces for larger knives. We don't measure it, we do this by eye. We always start by forging the tang which will become the handle of the knife. This way, we can fine tune our heating rhythm for best results, where it matters most, on the blade. When done masterfully, a forged blade will outperform a blade from the same steel that is cut to shape. A high performance blade will have superior metallurgy, blade geometry, and be comfortable to use. The blade profile is decided in this next forging step. Basically, we choose between short and wide versus long and narrow, or anything in between. We get to be really creative during this step. At this stage, the blade is still too thick to become a useful blade. The heel of the blade is thinned down by careful hammering. This step is the most technically difficult because we are trying to move hot steel in one direction with a round-faced hammer. From there, the front half of the blade is forged and then forged lightly a few times after that to even the blade out. A thick blade is not as useful as a sharp thin blade, so we really try to forge the blades as thin as we can. A thinner blade will be much easier for an owner to keep sharp as well. As molecules are forced away from each other during the low temperature forging process, internal stresses build up in the steel. These stresses are relieved by heating the forged blade to a dull cherry red color and then cooling the blade slowly in ashes, which insulate the blade for controlled cooling. This is the first step of heat treating, called annealing. Later will come quenching and tempering, altogether the three steps of heat treating. When red hot steel contacts oxygen in the air, iron oxide, also known as scale, forms on the surface of the steel. We sandblast the blade to quickly remove the scale. We lightly hammer the blades in a process called cold forging. Cold forging is common in high-end Japanese blades. We are trying to add just the right amount of work hardening to the steel to make the final blade cut better. It is important to be intimately familiar with the steel though, since overworking the steel can make it crack and fail. The blade pattern is traced onto the forged steel blade with a carbide scribe and then cut out on the metal cutting bandsaw. Final shape adjustments are made on various metal grinders.
special hardened steel stamps of various designs, custom made for us, are stamped into the blade to identify the individual bladesmith. Holes for the handle pins are marked and drilled at the same time. Very thin clay is painted onto the blade and dried prior to heating the blade in the fire for quenching. The clay ensures that the blade will fully harden in the warm water as it is quenched. We quench all our blades in water because the water makes the blades harder, which in turn makes blades cut better. After quenching, the blade is held over the flames until the blade is just hot enough to make drops of sprinkled water dance on it. Care must be taken to reheat the blade evenly or else some spots might get too soft and others too brittle. Water quenching is very severe and often distorts the blade by bending or twisting it. A brass hammer and wooden stump are used sparingly to gently coax the blade as straight as humanly possible. A unique rotating water stone is used to quickly grind all bevels, including the secondary and primary edges of the blade, for maximum cutting performance. Generally speaking, thin acute grinds on blades allow the blade to cut through things better, but obtuse, thick grinds are stronger for more robust knife use. Fine sandpaper is used to polish out rough scratches from the grinding process. Polishing blades is a complex skill, and knife makers never stop learning better ways to do it. Suitable handle material is selected and rough shaped to fit the knife handle. The front chamfers are completely polished prior to gluing to simplify the operation. We use two-part epoxy to attach the handle. Mixed perfectly, epoxy will cure as hard as glass, and combined with the pins we add in a later step, make for a very durable handle. The temporary pins we use in this step are removed just before the epoxy is fully hardened, and brand new pins will be added later. Once the epoxy has cured, we use various grinders and hand tools to shape and polish the handle for a comfortable fit. At Carter Cutlery, we believe that a tool designed for the hand should be made by hand. Fresh pin stock is cut and ground to the perfect length and then peened in place by means of a peening hammer. The protruding pin heads are then ground down perfectly flush with the handle. Combined with the glass hard epoxy, the handle will last for generations. The knife at this point is basically finished and functional, but now we try to make it as pretty as we can by careful polishing and paying attention to every minor detail. The last step is to ensure the blade has a razor sharp edge on it. We accomplish this by carefully grinding the primary edge on a sequence of water stones, starting with rough stones and finishing with very smooth stones. We test the edge by cutting various objects until we are satisfied. We wipe the completed knife with a clean cloth and visually inspect it one last time before putting it in a box and offering it for sale. This is a moment of intense satisfaction for a bladesmith. If every unique step were counted, it takes about 65 steps to make a forged knife from start to finish. At Carter Cutlery, we offer this knife shop tour at no cost to you and to your family. It is our sincerest desire that you enjoy yourself while learning about traditional Japanese bladesmithing techniques. Please understand that knives and the equipment to make them are inherently dangerous. By voluntarily entering into our knife making workspace, we are assuming that you understand the risk and that you accept all liability. We offer safety glasses, masks, and disposable hearing protection free of charge. And we have a voluntary offering box in the front showroom if you would like to provide the cost of safety gear for future guests by paying it forward. Now that you have patiently watched this video, 
you will momentarily exit through the door on the left. For your safety, please stay within the painted yellow lines on the floor. The bladesmiths move rather quickly between workstations with sharp and extremely pointy blades in their hands. Also, please watch your step going over the dust-proof seals as you move from room to room. If you meet one of our bladesmiths in the shop, feel free to ask them a question or two. They'll be delighted to say hello. Please keep your visits brief though, since they don't get paid unless they complete their own knives. Also, if someone is working on the bandsaw, the power hammer, or the rotating water stone, please refrain from engaging them. These machines require full attention in order to keep safe. Have fun, stay safe, and feel free to sign our signature wall with your comments before you leave.